Welcome to Write With Love. I'm your host, Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day, g'day. I'm Sarah Williams. Thanks for joining me for episode 48 of Write With Love. I'm recording this on Friday, 16th of November, 2018. I have been taking a break this week. I was starting to feel the burnout starting after a few busy weeks. So I sent the dairy farmer's daughter off to my editor then enjoyed spending some downtime with the family. I went to the movies and saw Bohemian Rhapsody, which I loved because I'm a huge Queen fan. I met and chatted to Aussie legend Fiona McIntosh about her latest book, The Pearl Thief. And yesterday I went to see the ballet Giselle performed in Brisbane. So I'm feeling much more revived and ready to hit the revisions when my editor sends them back next week. The Australian Romance Readers Association got enough funding to hold all four author signing events in March 2019. Reader tickets are on sale now for a romantic rendezvous. The locations and dates are Brisbane the 23rd of March, Sydney 24th of March, Melbourne the 30th of March and Perth is the 31st of March and I saw Rachel Johns will be appearing in Perth so that will be great. I will be at the Brisbane signing and would love to see you there. I will have all my books as well as lots of free stuff for you and if you're a patron you can claim your hug. The ARA website is Australian Romance Readers wordpress.com If you love Australian rural romance then for only 99 cents you can read six of Australia's favourite best-selling full-length novels and one brand new short story. Annie Seaton, Suzanne Bellamy, S.E. Gilchrist, Anne B. Harrison, S.M. Spencer, Philip and Nefri Clark and myself have joined forces for a combined Kindle-only box set called Outback Carts. It will be live on Amazon on December 1st and you can pre-order it now. We've already hit the number one spot in several big categories which is great. It will only be available for sale until the end of February so you've only got a few months to buy it. If you would like to join me here in the beautiful Mullaney hinterland I have two spots left on the writers retreat I'm hosting from May 31st until June 3rd, 2019. All the details are on my page, sarahwilliamsauthor.com forward slash Mulaney dash writers dash retreat. We will be writing, talking craft and having fun. I will also show you all the steps involved in uploading a manuscript to distributors and how to professionally self-publish. If you miss out on that one, I have just opened bookings for my Noosa Writers Retreat. So if you're free October 18th to 21st, 2019, come and join us at the trendy beachside town for a weekend of writing and marketing tips. Both retreats are limited to six people, so get in quick. Shout out today for a brand new website and Facebook group which is devoted to Australian rural fiction. If you love reading fiction set in Australian landscapes, whether it be historical, romantic, intrigue, or just a plain good yarn, this is the place to find your book of choice and to explore the wonderful stories penned by these talented Aussie authors. The list includes Annie Seaton, Derry Fraser, Rachel Johns, Tia Cooper, Mandy Magro, and so many more, including myself. There is a Christmas giveaway which is now open and there are loads of signed paperbacks and ebooks up for grabs, including a couple of mine. You can go to www.australianruralfiction.com And if you are an author who would like a shout out on the show for as little as $25, 
send an email to sarah at serenadepublishing.com or become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author for more information. Next week, I am chatting to a women's fiction author who you have probably heard of, Monica McInerney, author of Those Faraday Girls and Trip of a Lifetime, chats with me about her journey at all those international best-selling novels. Today on the show, I'm chatting to horse enthusiast Lizzie Tremaine, a historical novelist from New Zealand who I met at the RWNZ conference earlier this year in August. Here's the interview, and I can't wait to see you next week. G'day and welcome to Write With Love. Today on the show, I have author Lizzie Tremaine. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I've been very excited about doing this. <laughs> no worries at all. So you're an American by birth, but you live in New Zealand now. So I just want to clarify the accent for everyone listening. <laughs> so um, can you tell us about yourself and your writing journey? Well, I guess it started a long time ago, so I've got a lot of time. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Northern California in the Redwoods, in a little tiny place called La Honda, up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, where, um, as my bio says, I grew up riding wild. I spent a lot of time out in the middle of nowhere, racing around in the Redwoods on pack rock ponies. <laughs> had a great time. Um, I read a lot. Um, if it wasn't curled up in the bottom of my sleeping bag with a torch at night, which was a flashlight then, um, it was... Uh, while I was taking my pony out to have a graze on the end of a lead rope, curled up in the tall grass, hiding from the world, and going to my own worlds. So I, I was an avid reader. Um, we always had lots of books in the house, and I encouraged it a lot. Um, I decided when I was seven that I was going to become an equine veterinarian. There was never an, an interest in just being a vet. It was I was going to be a horse vet, and I helped all the local neighborhood animals and um, progressed on and went up and finally did get into vet school at UC Davis and did uh, went equine track there. So I basically am not much use for anything but horses, which is fine because that's all I want to do. Um, but while I was a veterinarian, or well, I'm still a veterinarian, but during my veterinary profession, I started writing. Um, when I came, to, I came to New Zealand two years after I got out of vet school and after I'd been to the east coast of the States learning acupuncture, chiropractic, and postural rehabilitation for horses. Um, and after that time, I went to New Zealand on holiday, was invited to take a job. There weren't any other equine vets in the North Island of New Zealand at the time, other than one at the veterinary school. So I was a bit of an enigma to them, with nearly 30 years less subtlety than I have now. <laughs> walking into a racing sort of a practice uh, person that hadn't ever played with racehorses very much, so that was interesting. Uh, but while a very short time after that, because I did these other modalities, the acupuncture, chiropractic, postural work, um, I met with uh, Joan Gilchrist, who was then Horse and Pony editor. Uh, horse and Pony magazine uh, in New Zealand is the big horse magazine in New Zealand. It was the big horse magazine at the time. And I wrote a lot of articles for her for several years, so uh, when I look back at those, I really appreciate what Joan did for me because I needed a lot of help. <laughs> so I <laughs> did a lot of that. Um, but I wrote for them for years. So that was my first real public writing. And then I did a, 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 um, a membership of the Australian New Zealand College of Veterinary Scientists in, uh, in equine dentistry. So after that, I started writing even more doing a lot of presentations on dentistry. I also have a certification from the International Vet Acupuncture Society, IVAS. I wrote about that a lot as well. But I didn't do any fiction writing until I damaged myself quite badly about seven years ago. Um, some old spinal fractures um, went bad, and I blew a couple of discs. I thought I'd never practice again, and I went back to uni and did another year of uni. So I did a graduate diploma in, um, in teaching, to teach high school sciences, college sciences down here, it's called. And while I was out, I started writing. 
So I, I've done a lot of carriage driving. I do combined drive with my big Warmblood. My son Elliot used to ride, uh, used to compete with me, which was a lot of fun. Um, and that's the horse and, car- horse and carriage if you see on my websites. That is our combination. And um, I did a lot of writing with that. But one of the ladies that I met through carriage driving was a writer. And she said, you need to come to this meeting. It's a local branch meeting of the Romance Writers of New Zealand. I thought, oh, Romance Writers. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, what the hey, it'll be fun. I'll go along. And these ladies were a hoot. It's coast to coast branch of the uh, Romance Writers of New Zealand, and they are wonderful. It's a big group from Auckland all the way down to uh, nearly to Taranaki, and, and it covers the whole that whole middle of the North Island. But they were wonderful, and I've been involved with some other writing groups a little bit here and there. No one has been as welcoming, as friendly, as helpful as the romance writers from New Zealand. doesn't matter what genre you're writing. You can write mystery. You can write you can write anything. They're there to help you. And everybody is wants you to succeed as much as they do, So as much as they want themselves to. So <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. Um, but from that, um, I started writing. I went to, the, I went to that first meeting, as I said, and three weeks later was the, first, was, was the romance writers annual conference. And they said, oh, you got to go. you got to go. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, I do have to go. So I walked into this cult. I've been writing for three weeks, and I walked into this meeting, and we had some amazing speakers, and I was amazed and floored and learned so much. I went home. I'd written I, – I, I did a cold read. Um, for people who aren't aware of cold reads, cold reads are where you read the first two pages of your novel – and um, editors and agents in the audience comment on it. So you get ideas. And at that very first one, an agent said, look, I'd like to see the rest of it. How much have you written? She said afterwards. And I said, you've seen it. (laughs) She said, go home and finish it. I've written two pages, okay? She said, go home and finish it. I want to see it when it's done. And they say that the hardest thing for a writer to do is to finish that first book. And it was hard. But when it got really hard, I knew that this lady wanted to see it at the end. And that was what kicked me on. So, hey, guys, get yourself out there. And put it out there. Put it out in public. And let people comment. Let people let people, like, people that know what they're doing, let them comment. And if you can find a reason to keep going, get through that first one, it'll do it for you. Yeah. Sorry, I cry at nothing. But <laughs> <laughs> so okay. But anyway, it drove me on and got me to finish that first one. Unfortunately, when I finished it, she said, I love it. It's really good. It's wonderful, but I don't have a place to put it Mm. in my mind. And um, my books have continued like that. And I've sent them to the people who, every time I do, um, I present them to authors and agents at conferences. They say, I love it. I don't have a place to put it. Nobody's buying that sort of books right now. Mm. But you know I'm a horsey chick, and I would have loved to read this when I was little. Now, I would have loved to read stories about about the Old West, about Pony Express, about gutsy girls doing amazing things, and cool guys that, that, that are willing to keep up with them. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I've done. Um, so that's, that's, that's sort of been my writing journey, but um, since then I've written quite a few books. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about your books. Um, I know you've got some covers there, so I'd love if you show us, for those people watching on YouTube, um, show us the covers of your books and kind of, yeah, tell us about them. Okay, good. This is my first story. It's called A Long Trail Rolling, um, and this is the back cover. Back cover. The insides, if you're lucky enough to buy them in New Zealand, they've got fun pictures of the author on the island at, at her house oh, and the other cool. in there. So anyway, A Long Trail Rolling is, has been awarded quite nicely. Um, it won the, it was, it was placed in the Great Beginnings Contest the very first year I've been writing. I haven't quite finished it. It was just about done. Um, so that was, that was the first year. And the second year, I finished the manuscript and I entered it into the Pacific Hearts Contest. And the Pacific Hearts, a little hard to see because it's beautiful crystal. Um, the Pacific Hearts is the award for the uh, best unpublished manuscript 
that year at Romance Writers of New Zealand. Yeah. And those are a wonderful thing to get. Yeah. And the next year, after I'd self-published it, independent published, um, I was blessed enough to win the best first novel in the Koru contest, which is um, the Koru Award of Excellence. So this is the best first novel um, of the year. And I also won third best long novel of the year, which was quite exciting because it was ahead of some very well-published um, um, books by, by, by full-on publishers. So that was yeah. kind of exciting. Um, it's in 1860, it's a story with, it has immigrants, it has horses. Did I say it has horses? Yes, yes. Has horses. everything has horses. <laughs> um, what people often forget in the Old West, quote, Old West, is that other than the Indians, everyone was an immigrant. And people forget that, and they think everybody's a cowboy and goes around with a drawl. And that didn't even happen yet. There weren't even cows out there yet doing much other than milking. So um, on the opening page, she finds her father dead, and she's on her own. She and her father had been trapping for years, and she's on her own, and her father's dead, and he didn't die by himself. Yeah. So he, it, what, what's she do? What's she going to do then? So um, it's her story. And it's a lot of fun. She's been trained by her father, who is a Polish. Her mother and father, mother and father were Polish, mm -hmm. and had been trained in Dzidzitowka, which is where our trick riding comes from. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Cossack uh, war moves and trick riding and that sort of thing. And she's been trained in that. So it's a lot of fun. It involves Pony Express, involves girl and a boy, and all of that. So you can guess what might happen. Awesome. <laughs> it's it's also a suspense. It was um, it was placed very highly in a contest in the southern United States as a romantic suspense as well. Yeah. So it is it is a romance, but romance is not the central theme of the story. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. It is followed, like literally, on the next moment by Hills of Gold Unchanging. Yeah. This is a bit of a fun story because. The third book in the series, A Sea of Green Unfolding, which is set in um, the Bay Area, of San Francisco Bay Area and New Zealand. Yeah. Um, this was meant to be book two, and I wrote this during Nano the following year from that. Yeah. I'm during NaNoWriMo, if you are a writer and you haven't found NaNoWriMo yet, find it. N-A-N-O-W-R-I-M-O. It will help you write, learn to not go back and fix the first chapter again and again, and it will let you finish your novel. This was meant to be book two, but two of my beta readers at the time, one who has since become my partner, said, uh-uh, there's another story between the end of book one and its epilogue. And I said, no, there's not, because I was ready to put number two out. And they said, yes, there is. So I finally gave up after weeks of this, and I thought, oh, okay, I'll write a quickie novella and get it out of the way. <laughs> and my it turned out to be 580 pages long. So it took me a little longer than I thought. Um, I, wrote, I, I um, researched them extensively, but go to great lengths to not make them a history book. Mm. A, a writer that I really, really admire, Deborah Chalinor, who's a best-selling author of New Zealand and Australian um, historical fiction, has very kindly provided me with... Um, reviews to put on the covers of all three books she's read them and she loves them so yeah. that's pretty <laughs> but it's all unchanging follows them they they carry on um it turns out he's he's of significant family from california and they decide finally that they're going to go back they're going to go home but in between utah and the san francisco bay area is uh, are, qu are quite a few interesting things like the silver mines of Virginia City and Nevada and, and the um, the gold mines in California, um, and they get involved with that. And there are some very significant uh, discoveries around the time that they were there, yeah. and they've been incorporated into the book as well. Like in Virginia City, you'll learn about a lot about mining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were some major um, natural disaster catastrophes at the same time. It all happened in the same year, which is really convenient. Mm -hmm. Um, and I used all those in the story on their back. I'm not going to tell you what they were. 
Um, and book three, things go to Custard in California on their on the on the rancho, and they decide they are heading for New Zealand. Um, I can't say too much more about that. There, can I? Um, <laughs> Uh, suffice it to say, what they were told by someone in New Zealand, by the time they got there, the situation had changed considerably. And they wind up smack in the middle of the Waikato Wars, which is the the wars bet- the major wars between the settlers and the Maori that were already here. Um, it had, There's a lot of history that is not covered um, in the schools here. Mm-hmm. You went to school, didn't you? I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't hear any of that, did you? Nope. <laughs> In fact, when I was writing this one, I was um, teaching school in Pairoa, which is just right near where I live, and I actually dedicated this to the Maori students at the Pairoa College in one of these math classes, because they were born into a culture embracing an oral history, and and they didn't think they knew anything about Maori history, they, they, but they'd tell me all these things, and I'd say, well, you guys... Just down the road, this happened, and this happened, and this happened. You know what? They're looking at each other funny. I'm thinking, well, what's going on here? And I said a few more things. They said, yeah, get on with it, miss. And, I said, well, and one of them finally says, oh, miss, that's not history. I said, well, do you guys know about this? I said, yeah, we know about all this. And I said, well, how do you know? Oh, that's not history, miss. That's just something my nana told us. And I said, whoa, guys, <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> I just said, um, you didn't believe me when I said your those stories, your kuya and koro, koro told you were real history. You know more than you think you do. So, And, and it also was um, dedicated to old and displaced cultures. So, um, yeah, so, uh, that, that one holds a really special place in my heart because this is my adopted country. I'm here because I want to be here. So um, this is actually, I, I do all my covers as well. I do all my covers. I do my formatting. I do everything. Yeah. Uh, probably would have more time to write if I didn't, but <laughs> it's important to me that I do. So this is actually, the big, the big bay horse on the covers is actually my horse and my son on, on the big horse as well. Um, and this is a river and the bush out behind my own house. And this is Hunua Falls, which is significant in the story as well. This is up near Auckland. Yeah, and they're beautiful photos, really stunning. Thank and you. Um, and I do love that you've written about um, New Zealand history. Um, off the top of my head, the only one that I can think of who's written a fictional historical, um, you know, romance is a woman who doesn't even live in New Zealand or Australia for that matter. She lives in Europe. <laughs> Um, does quite well. It's quite a good story. But, yeah, I, I love um, that we are, I mean, I'm an expat, so I don't live in New Zealand anymore. But, um, you know, I do love that we are embracing our history and, and not, yeah, I'm talking about it more, exactly like you were saying. They um, they only taught us what they wanted us to know. And I guess that's, you know, what, what all nations do. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah it's, it's great that novels can bring around um, the truth. Yeah. I- so that's I had I had to really delve to find those things. I bet you did. <laughs> in, the, in the general, they're in the library, but you have to look. Yeah, um, there are people there that love the history and are happy to explain, which is good. Um, there is another author in New Zealand right now. Yeah. Um, shout out for K A Serbian, mm-hmm. S E R B I A N. So there's someone for you to talk with as well. She she not only writes historicals, she um, I think I believe her her um, career is is in clothing in in making clothing and she does she she makes the clothing for her uh cover shoots and she puts the the photographs up um on different places deposit photo or somewhere you can actually buy them to use for your own covers so she's a good person for you to interview that's very cool i love it (laughs) that's all in new zealand so yeah it's good so yeah so cool Um, so that's the ones that I finished in. It's called the Long Trail series, mm. Long Trails. Um, and so far there are three books. Um, there will be a New Zealand book following A Sea of Green Unfolding, and that hasn't been started yet. I've done some of the research for it. But the next book that is in that series isn't really in the series. It's actually before A Long Trail Rolling, but it's someone that's, it's, it's a story of two people that are actually in 
a trail, a CM, uh, in a long trail rolling, yeah. but it's 30 years before, mm-hmm. and it's in Russia, and it's called Tatiana. It, the covers are up on my website. I've had the covers made for ages. I finished them a long time ago. And those were pictures that my partner took of me on a, on a sailing boat out of Coromandel, New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Tatiana. <laughs> <laughs> If you, if you look like your characters, it works. <laughs> oh, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> and um, so Tatiana, unfortunately, was going to get to be a war and peace, and my partner kept saying, <laughs> it's not going to be short at all. I kept saying, it's going to be short. He says, no, it's not. And so I think I've just actually finished planning it all out, and it will be four books. <laughs> <laughs> But the first one will be out before Christmas. So awesome. people who are waiting for Tatiana, I'm sorry. The libraries have been writing me, when is Tatiana coming? When is it coming? So I, a lot of my books go to libraries and and, and what, well, college in New Zealand high schools. Yeah. Um, and a lot of a lot of them are buying the, the Long Trail series because there's a lot of history in America as well for that. Yeah. Uh, so I'll talk about what's coming up soon. Sorry, that's more. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> my other series as if I didn't have enough to do um, I consider my point of difference to be that I'm a vet- an equine veterinarian and that I'm horse freak mm. um, I've competed I've taught I've do all, done all sorts of things with it um, whether riding, driving, in hand but um, combined drive carriage driving is not the most fun you can have with a horse, I think, at speed behind a big horse cross country. Yeah. Gotta be good. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Series, and I hesitate a little bit because this is not the current cover. This is only the ones on my printed ones still. Um, this is a series that I've just begun called Once Upon a Vet School. And it is a semi autobiographical series that I've started in the middle. <laughs> If Star Wars can do it, so can I. I can get away with it. Um, it's a series about a girl named Lena from the time she hears that you need good grades when she was about seven to get into vet school through to the time that Lena graduates from veterinary school in California and goes to New Zealand and practices as an equine and sometimes zoo dental vet in New Zealand. So... There are parts that are real and there are parts that are not real. There are no real names yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for reasons, um, but they are novellas and they're a lot of fun. So I'm enjoying them and I, I have two of those out now. Number seven is called Lena Takes a Fall and it happens mostly within a veterinary school, yeah. named, which is unnamed. Um, and then the book six I just finished, so I'm working backwards for right now. Um, and that one features endurance riding in a big way. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, so that'll be fun. And the next one of those is coming out for Christmas <laughs> in a box set with uh, one of the box set groups that I'll be telling you about in a second. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Oh, so you've got lots there for us to, to enjoy. So I love it. Um, so, yeah, you, you're you indie. We've, we've covered that, that you're indie, and you do it all yourself, which is awesome. Um, but, of course, we whenever we are indie, we always have people that we collaborate with. So you've got a couple of groups that you collaborate with. Tell us about those and give them a shout-out for us. Okay. I have been really, really lucky to have been invited to um, by, by e- Elizabeth Ayers, um, invited me to join a wonderful group called Authors of Main Street. She said, I know you don't write contemporary. I know you write historical, but I know you can do it. (laughs) We want you to come and write with us. So they write hometown contemporary fiction. And they're they're all sweet, so you won't find any swearing or any sex. Anybody can read them. And they put out a Christmas box set every year. And this year we also put out a, um, a summertime box set. So you get nine novellas. Or like 99 cents. And they're wonderful. They are the go-to Christmas box set for Romance Writers of America, it seems. Wow. And they do very well. Um, 
It's a lot of fun. I've never written short. It was the biggest challenge I ever took on. And I was trying to write for 30, and I think I ended up at about 50 or 60. <laughs> 60 which is good because this time I have to write a shorter one. <laughs> All the time. I have one due at the end of the month for them as well. But that one will be something that I can tack on to um, the Once Upon a Vet School. It's going to be part of one of the Once Upon a Vet School ones. Okay. So that that box set is where I write my Once Upon a Vet Schools. They go into the, we collaborate. Um, this book, this group, we don't do as much together as we do in the one I'll talk about in just a second. We basically all submit our stuff, and we have one wonderful woman that works with us who puts it all together, and she gets a percent and share of our takings. Mm. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so that works really well. Um, and they're called, again, Authors of Main Street. They're on Facebook. They have a website. It's all there for you. Yeah. Um, all of these are all of these things are listed on my lizzietremaine.com website as well. So if you forget any of it, it's fine. You can just go look it up. <laughs> um, the, <coughs> the other collaborative group that I'm in writes is is called blue stocking bells and there are facebook pages bells in blue or well it's blue stocking bells.net is the website and bells in blue is their facebook page yeah. but they um in both of these groups there are quite a few uh, best-selling authors mm -hmm. and they kind of help the rest of us out a little bit i think a lot <laughs> in the blue stocking bells there are some extremely experienced authors. So uh, one Australian, um, Elizabeth Ellen Carter, mm. uh, another New Zealander, Jude Knight, and several other people from America. And we are putting out our we, we're we're putting out our Christmas box set this year as well. That will be a historical fiction for me that involves the Highland uh, the Highland clearances. Yeah. And six months from now, I'll put it out as a as an individual book. But the one of the neat things about Blue Stocking Bells is that they give a large percentage of our takings to the Malala Fund, which helps girls get ed get education in countries where girls don't get education. Oh, excellent! So yeah, so it's quite good, very good from that aspect. Um, but that will be up for Christmas as well. With that one, we do a lot more promotion. Um, we help each other with promotion. We help each other write stories. We have a Facebook page where we can throw out our ideas and everybody throws out comments and much more interactive than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can do it on whatever level you like. Um, you can do, but, but collaborating rather than um, competing is mm -hmm. wonderful on all levels. Yeah, excellent. There we go. Cool. And you've got a website, a new website, horseandvetbooks.com. Tell us about this. It's very exciting. This is my most exciting new thing. <laughs> also, not just been writing books, I have built four websites this year, in addition to a part-time specialty equine dental practice. My boys have gone away to university and moved out to go and live their lives, so I actually have more time, which is good. <laughs> part, we don't get to do very much lately. We're run, busy doing things, and he's writing as well. Um, once upon a bit, uh, the um, horseandvetbooks.com. Excuse me. Lena. I was increasingly frustrated by the lack of a place for people who write the sort of books I write to put them. Hmm. Amazon doesn't have a horsey area. They don't have a veterinary area other than if you go into nonfiction, um, medical, veterinary. So that's where I put them. Hmm. But, but there isn't a place that somebody that likes horses can go and say, I want to look nonfiction horse or I want to look fiction horse. Oh, I want to look YA. I want to look middle grade. I want to look children's. Um, I want to look at donkeys. I want to look at zoo animals. Okay? Here, you go to the menu, bang, and you find it. So people can – So there was nothing like that. So I made a new website. Yeah. Another one. So this one actually links into Amazon. So when people click on it, they go straight to Amazon. Yeah. They're on Amazon, their choice of Amazon. So it's quite cool. It's very neat how it works. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. And I had – Nine, ten other authors, some veterinarian authors, some horsey authors, some zoo vet authors, um, 
do uh, we launched it with a Facebook party and it was really exciting yeah. and those are the people that are on that front page of it when you go in there um, um, we're running a blog every Wednesday with guest authors a very well-known horse trainer uh, Meredith from America has committed to giving me like four years of Wednesday once once a Wednesday a month posts for years Yes. So I'm really excited. So um, I have this this really cool author that I'm talking to. Her books are on there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's on my list. <laughs> Sarah is soon going to give me a blog post to put on the website as well. Do not blush like that. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, and this is a shout out, please, to anyone who writes horsey fiction, horsey nonfiction, veterinary fiction, veterinary nonfiction, or stories about dogs or birds or cats or whatever. There's a place for all of you on this website. So um, please, please get in contact with me. Yeah. So can't wait to talk to you all because I'm really, really excited about this. Yeah, and I'm so impressed with how many books there already are up there. And I'm, I'm because I write rural romance, you know, there's always horses in rural romance. So I'm telling everyone. <laughs> so, yeah. There's, there's, there's lots of stories on there that aren't about horses. Yeah. But they have horses in them. And they're books that horsey people would like to read. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah, no, I get that. That's awesome. So we've already covered what you've got coming out. You've got like a ton coming out before Christmas. And I mean, it's, it's September as we're chatting. So you've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and I have to for America in the next two months as well. Oh my so, gosh. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, crazy days. So um, where can we find you online and, and um, keep in touch with everything that's coming up? Well, you can find me in two places. One, probably the best place to find me is lizzietremaine.com. Now, Liz, there is only one Lizzie Tremaine if you spell it right. So it's L-I-Z-Z-I -Z -Z -I or L-I-Z-Z-I, -Z -Z -I, depending on what your country is. And Tremaine is spelled T-R-E-M-A-Y. N -E com. So it's lizzietremaine.com or you can find me at horseandvetbooks.com. H horse, let the word horse, and vetbooks.com. And I'm on all sorts of social media under Lizzie Tremaine. You'll find me under Lizzie Tremaine anywhere. Yeah. Almost anywhere. <laughs> that's it <laughs> I love love Instagram we do yes Instagram's that's awesome cool. well that was fantastic thank you so much for your time today Lizzie we really appreciate it you're very welcome thanks for joining me today I hope you enjoyed the show jump onto my website sarahwilliamsauthor.com and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of other inspiration if you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author. And remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye.